So in July, Disney released their newest cruise ship, the Disney Wish. As you may know, the Wish is the fifth ship in Disney Cruise Line's fleet. Of course, there was a lot of excitement for the Disney Wish. It was extremely hard to get on those first few cruises because all of the seasoned Disney cruisers snapped those up. Now that there's been some time for the rest of us to get on the ship, let's talk about how Disney fans really feel about the Disney Wish. Reactions to the Disney Wish have been a mixed bag, and that's putting it lightly. I have been really surprised about how much negative opinions there are for the Disney Wish. So today we have it all, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the truly confusing. Grab a snack, sit back, let's dive in. Now I do want to state for all the negatives that I'm going to put in here, of course there are people out there that are really loving it as well. This is a very polarizing ship. People do seem to love it or hate it. But I'm here to help you make up your mind about whether or not you want to take your family on this cruise ship. And I feel it's good to know how other cruisers really feel about it. While doing my research, I have noticed that most people are comparing the first four ships to the Wish. We've even done that here today. But... Ultimately, the Wish is meant to be a standalone ship. Well, for now anyway. The first four were similar enough in layout and design that it was quite easy to make these comparisons. The Wish, however, is meant to be different. Themed to that of a castle, the Grand Hall, as the atrium is called, is truly stunning, with the wishing star overhead on a beautiful chandelier modeled after Cinderella's gown. They've enhanced this Grand Hall feeling on the Disney Wish with a stage inside the Grand Hall, an overhanging balcony. Of course, of course, they've got these mice underneath Cinderella's dress and her shoe. It's really a stunning setting to escape to a wish-filled cruise. The real problem here is that people don't seem to like it. Now that's not everybody. People that love the ship really love it. It's stunning, it's highly immersive, it's highly themed. And if you like those details, I really do think you're going to like The Wish. I have just been extremely surprised about how many people don't like it and will not be going back. And it's not just one area of the ship that people are having issues with. It's the adults only quiet cove area. It's the main dining that everyone's gonna go to. Even exercise and walking around the decks is a negative for some people on this ship. Now, of course it's impossible to make everyone happy, but the 18 plus quiet cove pool area and sun deck do not seem to be one that is making anyone happy. I think this has to come down to expectations based on the other ships, but also could definitely have been better ex executed by Disney Cruise. As you may know, the 18 plus pool bar area, known as the Quiet Cove, consists of a pool two hot tubs, and at least two bars on the first four ships. It's all in one area. They keep the little ones out of there. It's really nice to be able to go and just have an adult section of the ship. The Wish has broken this up though, and they've made the pools significantly smaller. They've removed the hot tubs. There is now only one hot tub that is accessible to regular cruisers, and that's on the side of the ship in a really random spot. There are a couple of improvements on the Disney Wish as well. The Hero Zone and the Outdoor Oasis in particular will We'll get into those in a little bit, but first, let's finish up this Quiet Cove area. As you can see, they have three pools here, the Infinity Pool and two next to it. No, those are not hot tubs. I know they look like it. They are wading pools, and I think pool is really a strong term for these <laughs> bodies of water. They're really small. It looks like you can probably get five or six people in the largest one. They've also cut down this area significantly. There's a little bit of room for some tables. There's a bar right there, and that's it. In addition to not having much room here, it is also right next to the Aqua Mouse, which is their first attraction at sea. As you know, Disney Cruise attractions have audio that go along with the ride, and this one right next to the Quiet Cove is really bad placement because you're just gonna hear Aqua Mouse all day long. And honestly, if you're trying to get away to an adult area, you're not trying to hear the Aqua Mouse right next to you. There is another part of the Quiet Cove, and that is their sun deck. Even here though, people have issues because there is literally no shade. Of course, when you want some sun, you're gonna go to the sun deck, but it is nice to have a little bit of shade. It does get hot out there, especially in those humid environments. So while we're talking about the Quiet Cove area and the Aqua Mouse, the Aqua Mouse is their first ever Disney attraction at sea. On their website, they state this is an immersive show with music, lighting, and special effects. This fun-filled water experience invites Disney fans to glide up, down, around, and off the side of the ship through 760 feet of twisting tubes, providing breathtaking views of the ocean before splashing down into a lazy river. I have definitely heard mixed responses to the Aqua Mouse. For the most part, I've heard it's a bit of a letdown. There are a lot of blank screens, and it's just not very exciting, is the feedback that I have seen the most 
most of. One other little fun treat about the Quiet Cove is on the first four ships they have a snack case in there. It'll have these fun sweet treats in the mornings and then some nice cheese and olives or something like that later in the day. The Quiet Cove on the Disney Wish does not have this snack case. And just all of these built up together makes the Quiet Cove not very desirable for the Disney Wish. So the Wish really is more for families, I think. And of course us big kids who like Frozen, Marvel, Star Wars, etc. That's really what this ship is about. The Disney Wish is more themed, more immersive, and that's great if you love those storylines. However, if you do not, I can see why it's not gonna be for some people. There are a lot of people that like to cruise Disney as adults only, and the Wish is not hitting the mark for those cruisers. That being said, it's a bit of a miss for the teens and tweens as well. We'll come back to those. The youth clubs on the Disney Wish are very unique. Ages three through 12 seems to be the best clubs that they have on the ship. In the main hall, there's a slide that they can take straight down into the youth club area. That does seem to be quite popular and us big kids can do it too. You just gotta wait for the open house. One of the first areas that is really awesome in that youth club area is the Star Wars Cargo Bay. This is a highly interactive space where they will get to feed lifelike interactive creatures and encounter some of the most dangerous beings in the galaxy. Of course, they're gonna have help from Rey and Chewbacca, which will channel the force to secure the ship. How fun is that. They also have a really cool Walt Disney Imagineering Lab. I will definitely be visiting the Imagineering Lab during the open house. In this lab, you get to create your own Disney attraction. This is another hands-on activity. They'll get a unique behind-the-scenes peek and discover how Disney magic is really made. They also get to step into their own imagination and design their very own roller coaster. And then they get to ride it. How cool is that? For storybook fun, they have Fairy Tale Hall, which will have visits from princesses and queens. This is a really hands-on craft area. They even get to make ice magic at Anna and Elsa's summer house. And last but not least, they also have a Marvel Superhero Academy. Here, your young ones will get to train alongside some of their favorite Marvel superheroes. They get to team up with their favorite heroes, select their very own super suit, and then put it to the test in a battle with some of the infamous villains of the Marvel Universe. They also have the nursery and the Mickey and Minnie Captain's deck for your tiny humans. I personally think that these clubs for ages three through 12 are the absolute best in the fleet on the Disney Wish. If you have children that age and they enjoy Marvel, Star Wars, or animation, I highly suggest you look into this ship. That being said, if you've got tweens and teens and the kids clubs are really important to them, you might wanna look at the fantasy or the dream. The fantasy and the dream vibe in particular is amazing. They have really high tech areas. They've got this cool hallway you can walk through. It's all metal changes colors. It's got this metal door on the outside that they have to use their key card to get into during normal youth club hours. They've got a DJ booth in there. It's just a really cool teen club with a lot of high tech fun. If you've got a teen that's really interested in the clubs on Disney Cruise Line, I highly suggest the dream or the fantasy for that vibe experience. On the Disney Wish, I've got to say this looks a little boring. It's very plain. I just don't even understand the thought concept of going back to this design after the dream and the fantasy. The magic and the wonder are the first two ships, then come the dream and the fantasy, numbers three and four, and then wish is the fifth. With the first two, Edge and Vibe were kind of plain and boring, but they really took it up about 10 notches on the dream and the fantasy, and I feel like they just fell right back to the bottom on the wish with these club layouts. I'm sure they're fun. They have a coffee bar in there, which is cool. I'm just surprised that they don't have the technological elements in these clubs that they do on the fantasy and the dream. One area that they have on the Disney Wish that is fun for young ones as well as family is the Hero Zone. The Hero Zone is an indoor sports area and best of all, it's got air conditioning. The sports areas on the other cruise ships are outdoors and they can get a little warm because of that humidity. So it's really cool that they have this indoors. They have basketball, ping pong, and they will also host scheduled events here, which I think is the most fun. They have something called the Increda Games. The Hero Zone is themed to the Incredibles, and they have the Increda Games. This is an Incredibles themed inflatable obstacle course. 
How fun. There is a height requirement of 40 inches and you can go in there and go one on one with your friends and families. One of my very favorite activities to watch on Disney Cruise Line is Jack's Jack's Diaper Dash. This is where they race babies. Yes, that's right, they race babies. And this is now held in the Hero Zone. It used to be in the atrium, but now they've got a specific place for it because it's just that fun. I'm not exactly sure why racing babies is so fun, but it really is. Make sure you check that out while you're on the ship. As far as family fun, they also have movies on the ship, of course, and on the Wish, they have two theaters. One is for new releases. Any Disney movie that's come out in the last six months or so will typically be shown on the ship. If there is a brand new movie coming out while you are on board, they will even have a premiere at sea. The theater, though, is a a little bit smaller and this really does come down to comparison Disney cruisers love Disney Cruise and there are a lot of comparisons between this new Triton class of ship and the other previous classes so that's why we keep comparing it things in here I know many of you have not yet been on a Disney cruise ship hopefully this will help you as you do your research and I've got to say, I'm extremely excited to get on the Disney Wish. I think all of the ships are fabulous. They all have their own unique dynamics that are appealing. And also, that's probably why people do so much research. So you really do feel like you've gotten the best choice for your family. So anyway, back to the theaters. The second theater will have older classic Disney movies. And they are significantly smaller. So if this is important to you, make sure you check into those and get there a little bit early. So let's get into it. What are the big reasons people don't like the Disney Wish? Main dining and the bars, I think, are really the huge ones. And that Quiet Cove area. That Quiet Cove area is big. So let's start with the bars and lounges. On the first four ships, there are concentrated areas for adults. It will have a special section that has three to six or seven bars depending on which ship you're on. The Disney Wish has broken this up a little bit though. Deck 3 Midship will have the Bayou, Nightingales, and Star Wars Hyperspace Lounge. These are areas that are more open for family to access these areas. They are family friendly during the day and adult specific at night. And I think they're quite a bit of fun. The thing is that they are in the middle of the ship at three mid. This is right in the middle of all of the action. As an adult, it's really nice to be able to dip away from the noise. And you can't do that with this layout. I do think these bars are beautiful though. They have really cool cocktails in here. Definitely somewhere to visit. Just be aware that it doesn't have that duck out atmosphere that the other ones have. And I'm really curious for people that have done the wish first, are they gonna like the dream fantasy wonder or magic because they are so different. So if you've been on the wish first and then went on, on the other ships, let us know what you thought. The Bayou is a really beautiful space. This lounge is inspired of course by New Orleans and the princess and the frog. They've got magnolia blossoms, lily pads, and I think most beautiful is this canopy of twinkling lights, otherwise known as fireflies overhead. They will have live music here. They have special cocktails and they are open to family during the day. Nightingales is a fun piano bar inspired by Cinderella and the song Sing Sweet Nightingale. This is another really beautiful location. I love piano bars. They are small though so if you're going there for music make sure you get there a little bit early so you can get a seat. And of course the most anticipated bar and lounge on this cruise ship is the Star Wars Hyperspace Lounge and yes you can take the young ones in there during the day. And of course, during the adults only times, they're going to have interactive tasting experiences, signature beverages. They do a lot of things with smoke. Really cool stuff. And then they've got this screen in here where you can watch the worlds drift by. People do really love the Star Wars Hyperspace Lounge because it's fun to sit in that environment. I have heard a lot of feedback though that it's just very underwhelming. They could have done a lot more with this. Olga's Cantina at the parks definitely seems to be more interactive and enjoyable. I have not heard a lot of really good feedback on the Star Wars Lounge. They do have some cool cocktails in there, but that's really kind of it. They missed the mark a little bit with this. They could have done a lot more. There are a couple of other locations you're gonna find bars on the cruise ship. The Rose is really beautiful. That is gonna be up on deck 12 by Apollo Steakhouse and Ashante. The other bar I want to talk about is the Keg and Compass. This one is at five forward, which is by the spa area. So they really have changed the layout for the bars on the Wish. The Keg and Compass is their pub with a splash of Viking influence. It's based on the rich folklore of Norwegian seafaring and is inspired by the romance and adventure of the sea. They have three unique craft beers at this location. And I really love the wood carvings. It looks like a Viking ship. There's a Grand Mer 
maritime map that covers the entire ceiling. It is definitely a different vibe for their sports bar. Two other places people are really having an issue with, as we said, main dining and the spa. The census spa is 18 and over and they have a new outdoor oasis which has hanging beds, there's two hot tubs out there. It is an additional charge though to access this outdoor oasis. This is part of their rainforest room and the rainforest room is an additional charge either per day or per trip depending on how you choose to purchase it. Sometimes they don't have the per day available so make sure you check on the beginning of your trip if this is important to you. And before we get into main dining one other area that has been a bit of a disappointment I think are the pools. Now this is goes either way as does everything honestly. There are more pool locations on the Disney Wish than any other Disney cruise ship. That being said, they are all smaller and very shallow. There is absolutely no swimming possible in these pools. To be honest, the other ships don't have much swimming availability either. While the pools may look large enough, they're usually full and are more of a tiny human soup situation than actual swimming. So that brings us to the big one, main dining. How is main dining so polarizing on this ship? Well, I think it's because the theming. As you may know, on Disney Cruise Ship, they have main dining with three main dining restaurants. You will do what is called rotational dining, which means you will have a serving team of three people that will travel with you to each restaurant every night of your cruise. The rotational dining also includes putting families together. So if you don't want to seat with another family, make sure you request your own table. Although looking at Arendelle, it seems that might be kind of difficult with these huge tables they have. The three main complaints I have heard from these restaurants is they are too loud, they are too themed, and the food is not good. Now, you're going to get that critique anywhere. You cannot please all of the people all of the time because of course on the other side of that you're gonna have all of those families that absolutely love the theming how over the top it is how immersive it is and some people say that one of these main dining restaurants is the best food on Disney Cruise Line's fleet. First main dining restaurant on the Disney Wish is Arendelle, a frozen dining adventure. Disney Cruise Line website state how this is the first frozen themed theatrical dining experience. You will be transported to the enchanting kingdom of Arendelle. Queen Anna and Kristoff are celebrating their engagement and they have invited you to join them. They'll have musical performances from Elsa and Olaf. Oaken will make an appearance. It's really a loud, interactive, fun show to go along with your hearty Norwegian inspired cuisine. Depending on your preference, the food is a hit or a miss here. The most popular dish though is Elsa's Royal Baked Scallops. Everybody raves about this dish. And obviously, if you have young ones that love Frozen, you're gonna wanna choose this ship because, come on, that's amazing. The second main dining restaurant on the Disney Wish is Worlds of Marvel. At Worlds of Marvel, you will join Ant-Man and the Wasp during Avengers Quantum Encounter. They state that this is a demonstration of powerful superhero technologies. Leap into your own heroic role using an interactive quantum core at your table to shrink and grow objects at the push of a button. I've heard that this show is a little lackluster, there's not too much to it, and the menu is not a big hit either. This menu is a range of classic all-American fare to rich African flavors. 1923 is the third main dining restaurant on the Disney Wish, and this is one I'm extremely excited about. I've heard that people will dress up in 20s attire, we're definitely gonna do that. 1923 evokes the glitz and glamour of old Hollywood. And of course, you do not have to dress up. That's just what some of us like to do. It's a great excuse for a theme. 23 is named after the year the Walt Disney Studio was founded. They state on their website, travel back in time as you dine amid storyboards, sketches, and props to illustrate the early animation process. I've heard that there are over a thousand pieces of animation, art, and tools in here. They have a dining room for Walt as well as one for Roy. And many people have stated that 1923 is the best food on Disney Cruise Line's fleet. Almost all of their appetizers are a huge hit. The ahi tuna and the mozzarella are particular favorites as are the seared salmon and the 1923 peppered filet mignon. I just really love that this is based on animation and that they have a dining room for Walt and Roy. I think that's awesome. One other complaint I've heard about the Disney Wish is the state rooms. Apparently these state rooms are just a tiny bit smaller, but they also have just a little bit more storage. I don't think this is really a game changer. They also have a little speakeasy in Hook's Barbary. There's just a few different things on the Wish that make it, they've just made the Wish 
a little bit different, which I think is a great thing. I don't think all the ships should copy each other. It's nice to be able to have different experiences on Disney Cruise Line, but the reactions to the Wish has really made me interested to see if they change any of these dynamics on the new Disney treasure that's coming out next year. As Walt Disney said, we keep moving forward, opening new doors and doing new things because we're curious and curiosity keeps leading us down new paths. I'm excited to see the path that Disney Cruise Line is going to continue to take. If you haven't seen it yet, we've got 10 mistakes newbies make and everything you need to know for Disney Cruise Line in 2023. Thanks for being here and joining us in the Disney fun. I really hope these videos are useful for you. We'll see you real soon with some more Disneys.